Okay, so lesson on how to set up the uh, swivel preload on a Range Rover. I guess Disco will be the same, Land Rovers will be the same. Um, the swivel allows the steering to pull the front hubs from one direction to the other. Top swivel there, bottom swivel there, and there's coned bearings inside. Um, and basically what you need to do is you need to set up a preload to ensure that these are just tight enough um, and you don't dry. Um, the impact might be, if you don't do this properly, you end up with a dreaded um, death wobble um, when you go over 55 miles an hour um, and happen to hit a caterpillar on the road. And the steering wheel shakes violently. It's one of the causes um, for that, it's the swivel preload. Other causes, wheel bearings, other causes are the uh, bushes in the front radius arms and the front link. Um, the ball joints can cause it. Um, when I had it on my car, um, the, not this one, but my, my, my daily driver, it was actually the steering damper that was causing the problem. Looked new, looked clean, extended beautifully, put another one on, bump steer went away. It's frightening when it happens. Um, right, okay, so in order to set the swivel preload, um, and I've just rebuilt this axle, I've taken the retainer and the sweep seal off the back there, so the hub is nice and loose. What we need is a spring balance, which I've got up here somewhere. It's a long way up. Spring balance, and if I recall correctly, we're looking for two and a half pounds to pull the axle. Oh, it's gonna... Right, okay, it's so loose, it's just going under gravity at the moment. So what I need to do is to tighten this up. In fact, there's, I don't think there's any shims in here at all. So let's put some shims in and then tighten it up because these need to be done to about 60 foot pounds. Um, this top pin. I'll take the locks out and the washers out. The pin itself can be a pain in the ass to get out. Depends how, how it feels, I guess. This one's going to be a pain in the ass to get out. Let me get it out and I'll come back. Right, so here's the hub removed. I've just removed the whole hub to really show you what's going on here. This is the inside of the swivel housing. The CV joint sits in there. That's the CV joint. I've got the top bearing, which is still inside, and the bottom bearing. And basically, the idea is it swivels around this, um, this, this ball. Okay, it's called a swivel ball. Um, and then the sweep seal on the back, when it's full of oil, allegedly pre prevents oil from seeping out. So, looking at the pin, um, where's the pin gone? There it is. Um, I had to use a slide hammer to get the damn thing out. But the pin has kind of a tapered fit onto it. Um, I guess the tighter you push it down, the tighter that bearing becomes. So as you push it down, the bearing gets compressed, more load is put on that bearing. And you control that by the number of shims that go between this face and this face here. So you're dictating where the, where the, where the, the, the gap needs to be. One so here's the, uh, the hub back assembled. I've removed the top pin. The bungee cord's really just to hold the hub in place to make life a little bit easier. And then what I do is I pick shims um, out of here. I'll probably put, start with a couple of fat ones and see how it goes from there. Uh, basically the shims, there's a fat one there, there's a fat one there, two fat ones go onto the top pin and then I'll reinstall the top pin making sure that it goes through the bearing um, and the housing. Sometimes you just need a little bit of encouragement, but not too much I don't think. Right, one handed. Yeah, I can't do these things one handed unfortunately. Um, so now I need to take out this uh, bolt that I put in there for the puller. It's going to be irritating having to screw this in every time, but never mind. Worst things have happened. I might find a longer one. Um, there we are, he's out. I probably could do it actually around it. I don't need this locking plate. Not until everything's set up. And then these two get tightened up. One. Where's the other bolt on? There it is. 
and we do these up to 60 foot pounds I think it's 60 foot pounds um, and then once they're uh, nipped up then it's just a case of no wrong size lost the socket now this is what I do quite a lot there they are once these are nipped up to 60 pounds then I will come back to you done up these to 60 pounds it doesn't feel very tight to be quite honest we'll probably have to remove some shimmage I mean basically if it was too loose what I would do is um, I would remove shims from here if it was too tight I would add them in um, and that is pretty much about it so I'm gonna double check this so I removed the shims from the pin um, and as it turned out I didn't have two thirties I had a 30 and a 10 so I have one of those and one of these down here 10 thou in fact you can see the marks on it there so 40 thou in total it's too loose so I'm going to remove some so I'm going to do a 30 and a 5 now and see what happens with that okay so I've got 35 thou going in so nips that up that little fellow in there just for my slide hammer to help me pull the pin out uh, we've got the slide balance attached already the, uh, the hub is feeling a lot stiffer uh, but that said I'm able to shift it with about two pounds of force slide down here uh, this is in foot pounds this one uh, it's old school so you can see the full graduation there's the full graduation I want to be putting three foot pounds um, so really I want to be just before the four and you see it's very very little barely registers two foot pounds so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out because we're a lot better than we were I'm going to take out the five um, and just leave it with 30 so we're going down in the increments of five um, and then after five after 30 we have to go even further and then we've got the 10 shims um, to, to fiddle around with. right so I've taken the five shim out just 30 in there now and as you can see the hub is less floppy than it was before so we'll put on the spring balance we'll try and zoom in on it and we'll pull and I am just about so I'm between two and three that's 30 so let me shake the hub around let the bearings set on because obviously we want the bearings to be lubed up I did lube them up before I went into this exercise That is about three and a half, I reckon. If, if the worst comes to the worst, just putting it back on itself now. So once I overcome resistance, about three and a half. So that's 30. I had a five in there before. What I might do is put a three in there. Um, pretty fine stuff, isn't it? Um, and I measured all these, obviously, using the trusty micrometer, um, because they just came in a big bag. And if you can tell the difference between three and five, thou with your fingers you're a better man than I am or woman of course um, so I measured those out so I'll put a three and the 30 giving me 33 thou gap should loosen that up slightly because it's pulling about um, four pounds I want to be two and a half to three pounds um, 35 was too much so let's try 33 otherwise I don't know what we're going to do we have to go into odd shims then to go to 20 five and six to make 31 if you get my drift should be a laugh shouldn't it right i'm putting a three in there we are 33 has gone in <laughs> right i have to pull it the other way so that's probably that is probably about right. Yeah, that's too loose now. I'm going back to 30. I'm going to try 31, aren't I? Bastard thing. Um, because that's too loose. It's actually rotating on its own. Okay. That's too too loose. Right, I'm going to go to 30. So it's 33 at the moment. I'm going to go for 31. So I tried 31 thou, um, and I double checked it with the micrometer, um, and it would still flop around. What we've basically got here is the 30 
shim back in and that's pretty much how I'd expect the hub to behave. So it's got a little bit of inertia um, to hold it back and when I pull the gauge it's about four, between, in fact it's moving at three now. So that is perfectly shimmed at 30 thou, single shim, 30 thou. Um, so the next thing um, I need to do, which obviously I'm still building this car up, I need to put the brake back plate on. I'll secure the sweep ring now and I can top up the, um, the axle um, and secure the track rod arm. Um, and then obviously the caliper is going to go on when I bring those back down with me. Um, but that, that side is done. So that's pretty much how you do the, uh, the swivel preload. Start with something that gives you um, a bit of drag and take it from there. And if it's using too much force to pull the wheel around, then add shims. If it's too little force, then reduce shims. Okay? And it just compresses the bearings together. But that's pretty much how I'd expect that. So that's the job done.